Hey everyone, this is Joe Baker with the Edit Bay. In this week's episode, I'm going to be answering a question I was recently asked. What is the memory color scope I sometimes see in color grading apps? I use Red Giant's Magic Bullet Looks for color grading, and it does have a memory color scope. It's hard to tell by looking at this thing exactly what it does. I'll go ahead and scroll down here. But basically what this thing does is it's going to show you what colors were initially captured in your recording and how far away from that you're veering as you apply a stylized grade. So, for example, last night I just saw Mad Max, a very interesting film, had a very distinct color grade look to it. Uh, one of the things I noticed in the film is that it had really dark, saturated orange colors for the desert type scene, but it also had a really unnatural looking cyan hue of blue applied to the sky. Now I know I don't have this right now, I know this looks purple, but we're gonna tweak a couple of things using the memory color scope in order to achieve that look. So again, the memory color scope is gonna tell you what colors are present in your scene. So right now, the memory color scope is black up here at the sky. And what the scope is telling me is that there is no blue in the sky. You see a little bit of purple up here, uh, but purple is not a color that's gonna be registered on this scope. This will tell you where your greens are, your blues, your reds, and what is skin tone. In fact, this peach color down here is actually telling me that my ground right here is more skin tone color than it is red. So keep that in mind. Now, as we move on here, I'm gonna go ahead and toggle this on. This is a gradient overlay that I applied to make the sky look a little bit more like that saturated blue like from the movie Mad Max. And now if you take a look at the memory color scope, you can see we do now have blue present back in that sky. So if you add a particular type of look, like say a warm look, the cooler colors in your image like blue, cyan, and green will start to look more washed out and desaturated. The memory color scope will reflect that. So there are two situations when I find the memory color scope really useful. One is when I'm going for a really stylized, obviously treated look such as this. The other, let me go ahead and close this out, is when I'm going for, or when I'm grading human skin tones. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a shot of my daughter right here. Apply looks. And we'll scroll down here. If you take a look right here, up here we've, we see some blue, not very dark, saturated blue. So what it's telling me is there is some blue up here in the sky. It's just not super visible. It's not jumping out of the screen. This right here looks fairly saturated and bright, and that's that hoodie over here. Now take a look at her face. This peach color you see right here is skin tone, but this big blotch of red over here is saying that there's intense amounts of red on her face. So I can actually correct for that. Let me go ahead and throw a, let's see, colorista. We'll, we'll go from here. Let me just go ahead and apply the typical Cyan shadows will warm up the midtones a little bit. Probably get away with brightening this a tad. Now, take a look at her face. If we come down here to the HSL adjustment, one thing I can do is take the red, maybe move it closer to the orange, and then pull it down just a hair and try to get rid of that red in her face. So now I know that if I put on the skin overlay, this really should be centered pretty much on only human skin. So we can see the red is pretty much gone from the uh, memory color scope at this point, but she's actually starting to look a little bit gray, kind of chalky looking, and that really doesn't look natural. Maybe if this is a horror flick, Halloween's coming up, but that's really not the look I'm going for. In this case, we put a little bit more red back in there. That's actually starting to redden up her lips a little bit down here. That looks a little bit more natural. So really just moving that red closer to orange actually got us in a closer range right there. So I'm glad this question was asked. I really do think that everyone should learn the basics of how these scopes work. I tend to grade more by the scopes when I edit photos or videos on my mobile workstation because its monitor doesn't reproduce colors accurately. So when I'm on vacation and editing on the go, these scopes come in really handy. All right, that just about does it. My name is Joe Baker with the Edit Bay. If you found this tutorial helpful, please give it a thumbs up, share it, and as always, please subscribe to the channel to receive notifications of new post-production tips and tricks. I'll see you next time.